Merch available right now. Follow all social media platforms to stay updated on promos and more. What's up? What it do? It's your boy, Dead Gamer, and welcome to another episode of The Gamer's Den. If this is your first time here, we can talk about tech news, video game news, and we stay in that realm over here. So if you like that and you want to stick around for more, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And just to let everybody know, um, you know, a little announcement here. So there is a lot of expansion going on right now. I'm doing a lot of behind the scenes work and getting some stuff done. And with that being said, um, now on Hideout TV, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Hideout TV is a pretty dope platform. It's pretty cool. Um, I am putting some content on there as we speak. The Gamers Den will be on there as well. So I'm not just going to start that out and be like, okay, spow, episode 25 and up. No, no, no. I'm going to put every episode from episode one to the latest one on there. And I will continue to upload on there and YouTube as well. So... For everyone on Hideout TV watching this, yo, what's up? Everybody on YouTube, yo, what's up? If you want to go over there, you can definitely go over there, uh, subscribe to the channel over there, like the videos over there. That'd be really, really, really dope, and I really appreciate it. So make sure y'all go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, we expanding, man. We getting on a lot of platforms, taking over the game. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, let's get into quick hits. So to start off quick hits, you know, we got three articles to go through real quick. You know, we're going to talk about it a little bit, not too much. Startup Halo will bring driverless car service to Las Vegas later this year on T-Mobile 5G. So, you know, I like electric stuff and I like, you know, you know, like I said, this technology, man, we talk about it and technology is just advancing every, every, just every day. You know, every day, every moment, every minute. So let's get into uh, Halo and see what they got going on. Driverless car startup Halo has announced a new service coming to Las Vegas later this year. A fleet of remotely operated electric vehicles using T-Mobile's 5G network. It's potentially a big step toward fulfilling the promise of 5G remote driver tech. With a significant catch, the cars don't operate solely on T-Mobile 5G. While it's the primary network they'll use, they will also rely on other networks. The idea is simple enough. Halo, employ Halo employs remote drivers to operate the vehicles, delivering them to waiting customers who then get behind the wheel and take the car to their destination. When the trip has ended, the car moves on to its next pickup under remote control. Halo is also currently operating test drives with safety drivers in vehicles, which it says it won't include when the service launches for paying customers. And furthermore, down here, they, it says the company says that ultimately it hopes to achieve full autonomy and that in the meantime, its vehicles are designed to, quote, learn from their human operators. So uh, this is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Pretty dope. You know, um, I th it was something trending on the Internet not too long ago or just in the in the world, you know, about flying cars. They did like a test with a flying car and it flew for like like 30 minutes to an hour or something. And, you know, no hiccups, no problems. So to see these, you know, um, like kind of semi-operated vehicles pop up, it's really dope. And that should just let you know and get an idea of what we're going to be coming into years down the road. You know, some of us, we already in our 30s, mid-20s, you know, we kind of, you know, we we in the uh, latter half. You know, if you look at life in four quarters, you know, it's the second quarter right now. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, we might see, you know, a full society or the beginning of society where it's flying cars, cars that's driving themselves, robots doing things like it might turn into iRobot real quick. You know what I'm saying? It might just turn into iRobot real, real quick. But I think this is dope. So if you're in the Las Vegas area, you know, and if, you know, yeah, you just, you know, stay out, stay on the lookout for this, you know, take some pictures, you know, hop in it. Shit, let your boy know how it works because they ain't got this where I'm at. Like just the other day, I, you know, I saw the uh, university. I, I stayed, not stayed by, but that's in my city. I went past it a while, uh, a few moments ago, actually yesterday. And it was like, yo, they got e-scooters out this bitch. I'm like, 
like, okay, okay. I'd rather the CD, you know, turn into some E. You know what I'm saying? Because I got an e-bike. You know, I like the E. But all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next article we got. <laughs> it, it make me laugh every time. I, I just can't help but laugh. Pole Star made a more powerful version of its electric sedan for the Goodwood Festival. Yo, <laughs> I had to, bro. I had to. Let's get into it. Swedish electrical performance automaker Polestar made a more powerful version of its electric fastback sedan for the Goodwood Festival of Speed in the UK, which kicks off today, July 8th. Polestar, which is jointly owned by Volvo and Volvo's Chinese parent company, Geely or Geely, I don't know what that is has turned the dual motor configuration to pump out 476 horsepower compared to 408 horsepower in the production version. By doing this, it hopes that the modified Polestar 2 would be able to finish Goodwood's hill climbing race in record time. The company has also widened the vehicle stance by 10 millimeters on both sides and lowered the ride height by 30 millimeters to improve its handling on the track, and it's carried over a few features from its first vehicle. The plug-in hybrid Polestar 1 including 9 by 21 inch wheels, 6 piston Akim Akabono front brakes, I hope I said that right, and a 275 over 30 R21 Pirelli P0 Rossi performance tires. Are oh, they with the Pirellis on there? The Pirelli tires, the Pirelli tires, the Pirelli tires, the Pirelli tires. Yeah, boy. Okay, so that's pretty dope. That's dope. We got electric cars being made you know it's just like i said man you know it, like electric is becoming a thing now you know as the more time goes electric is becoming a thing i have an e-bike you know it's it's serving me well right now and you know it's it's a pretty good mode of transportation i recommend an e-bike if you don't have a car or if you don't want to walk you know charge it up and go you can get you know with most e-bikes you can get anywhere from 10 to 15 miles in one charge so you can hit a couple places before, you know, you got to just pedal like a normal bike. So, you know, do I want to see an a e-car, an electric society? Yes, I do. I do. But at the same time, I just want it to be sustainable. You know what I'm saying? Because just the, the last episode, what did I report on? The Tesla car blowing up. You know, so I want this to be sustainable. I don't want us to just be spontaneously combusting every time we hop in one of these things. Because then I'm not going to want one and I just stick with the e-bike. Because I ain't heard of e-bikes blowing up yet. But these e-cars is blowing up. That's not cool. That's that's not what we, that's what we not doing. That's what we not doing. All right. And we're going to get into the last article of quick hits here. Now, I thought this was mad dope. I thought this was really, really dope. And this is why antiques and and retro things and older things are somewhat important. Goodwill worker finds rare 10K Atari video game in box of donations. Now, you know what's crazy about Goodwill, bro? Like, people sleep on Goodwill to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like, and even it's not even just Goodwill, a thrift store. You can find a lot of old things in there that'll sell for hundreds and thousands of dollars. You'll find um, you know, just articles of clothing that you might not even be able to find nowhere else because they're rare, they're antique. You know, they came out in such a time frame and the production on that shirt is no more. So, you know, let's go ahead and uh, get into it and read some of this. A Goodwill location in Texas recently discovered that a box of old video games it had received as a donation contained an incredibly, incredibly rare and valuable Atari game. Fortunately, the worker handling this particular box recognized that he had found something special. Let's go ahead and scroll down here some more. Let's just go ahead and get down to it. Goodwill confirmed for Fox News that a rare copy of the Atari video game Air Raid had been donated to its North Central Texas location. The game cartridge is unusual looking due to its T-shaped handle, which is why it was easy for Alex Juarez to spot. 
there are reportedly only 13 known copies of the game. And that's what make it rare. See, that's what make it rare. Now, I don't know how Fire Air Raid was, so a lot of my old heads or, you know, any older people that watch this, y'all gonna have to say something in the comments. Let me know, you know, how Air Raid was. But, um, yeah, you know, if it's only 13 copies of anything, that's real rare, and the demand is gonna be mad high. People gonna be charging high prices for that. It's gonna be worth a lot more. You know, so... You know, it's saying that his father was able to identify the game and confirm that it was worth more than the average Atari game. You know, that's pretty much dope. The game was listed on the site where it was sold under an auction format. After being listed for just seven days, it sold for $10,590.79. So, yeah, man, that's a lot of money. Mans came up. Mans came up, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's just crazy man man's came up but this is also the story of you don't know what you got till it's gone right whoever gave this up just gave away ten thousand dollars if you in that texas area and you see this and you like oh I, that was mine i just got rid of that it's over yeah bro or yeah woman you just gave away ten thousand dollars you know what i'm saying you you just gave away ten point five thousand dollars I, I, like you got to take that L, man. You got to hold that. You you definitely got to hold that. It's it's nothing you can do about it, man. You got to hold it, own it. Yeah, man. You gotta you gotta take that. But with that being said, man, that's gonna be it for quick hits. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know that's gonna be that for quick hits. And before we move on to the last thing, uh, to our main topic of today, I just want to sit here and let y'all know that, hey, man, look, today is Friday. This will be uploaded either the same day, Friday or Saturday. Y'all have until Monday to go hit the link in the description, click, click, click merch and go ahead and cop the player one vibes, hoodie, shirt, whatever whatever because come monday it's gonna be gone it's not gonna be put back up it's gonna be gone forever so if you ain't got it you ain't got it and if you want it you're gonna have to find it which means it's gonna be like the atari game it's gonna be real rare and somebody might inflate the price on you so if they inflate the price on you guess what that's how much you gotta pay for the hoodie that's how much you gotta pay for the shirt that's what you gotta pay for the iphone case the water bottle whatever it is so click the link in the description click the merch you know shop the new drop is also available to get get some more merch while you at it because we all need clothes you need dope shit i got it for you so yeah so let's go ahead and move on to the last topic of today which is the main topic of today and the topic is cloud gaming so before we get into any of the articles uh i want to speak on cloud gaming real quick because cloud gaming is, uh, you know, in the beginning stages. So cloud gaming, um, you know, cloud gaming, it's new and a lot of people don't understand it. And there's a lot of misconception about cloud gaming right now. And there's a lot of hate towards, you know, certain platforms and cloud gaming and stuff like that. So, well, I guess this is the introductory to, to the whole conversation, right? So cloud gaming is the future. Cloud gaming you allows you to play a game without downloading it directly onto your hard drive and or console. So Stadia, Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Now, I think, you know, all of these, you know, Amazon Luna and whatever other cloud gaming entity exists now. You know, these are in the baby stages. These are the beginning stages of cloud gaming. I was just live streaming on a, a different platform the other day, actually yesterday. And I was talking about this, you know, and some people was like, oh, yeah, this or, you know, they was learning stuff because, you know, I was putting them on the game, putting them on game body. So, you know, I, and I figured, you know, I just make that a talking point because I do want to make this. I do support cloud gaming and specifically I support Stadia. So I just want to you know, let people know that, yo, cloud gaming is the future. So, you know, Stadia, we all know Stadia, right? And Stadia gets a lot of hate. If you search Stadia up on YouTube, you're going to have a lot of content creators speaking negative about it. You're going to have a lot of people hating on it. You're going to have a lot of, you're going to have the same people, if not more amount of people supporting it. You have people, 
doing uh, Stadia live streams talking about it. You have people playing games on their channel through Stadia and building up their own platforms through Stadia. You have, you know, just Stadia is a substantial platform, but a lot of people dislike it because, you know, one thing about society today is that it's cool to hate. So if the majority of people versus the less amount of people hate something, then it's cool to hate it, which is not cool whatsoever. And the other part of this is, is that Stadia is not, you know, Stadia is crawling right now. You know, it's a baby. It, it came out, it could, could, you really, it didn't have a lot of features, then started crawling. Now, you know, crawling into standing up and then into walking and so forth. So there's an article here um, that I have up. And it has, you know, you know, their opinion on Stadia and, well, not really much Stadia, but just cloud gaming as a whole. And it kind of is, right? Kind of isn't, you know, whatever the case, depending on what it is, right? So, one thing I do want to pick out of here is the global gaming industry is huge. Revenue hit $180 billion in 2020, nearly double the film industry. Gaming analysts, uh, I'm just going to call you Guha, I don't want to mess up your first name, thinks it's a, quote, a crucial time for cloud gaming to gain mainstream prominence, end quote. And so that's kind of what I was saying, right? Because, like I said, it's just the beginning, but cloud gaming doesn't have mainstream prominence. And it's not going to have mainstream prominence right now because it's still being developed. The most stable cloud gaming platform is probably Stadia, hands down. Just, just off of just, this is what Google set out to do. And they're, you know, they wanted to be the first ones on it. So their infrastructure, their technology is probably more solid and more stable than Xbox and PlayStation put together. Even Amazon too. You know, but to go on, they even have a thing, but there's one thing big tech ain't great at. In this cloud gaming and they have google and amazon listed google launched stadia in november 2019 but has since shut down its internal game developer division amazon launched luna in september 2020 but has failed to gain traction despite spending 500 million dollars annually on the other end microsoft has a hit on its hand with game pass its xbox streaming product it just launched on apple and pc devices and is projected to hit 30 million subscribers by the year end so a lot of people are bigging up Xbox Game Pass, right? And I mean, a lot of people are bigging up just Game Pass. Oh, Game Pass is the greatest. You know, Game Pass is uh, whatever. But in, in, especially in comparison to Stadia, right? So before we get into the to the comparison of Stadia and Game Pass, I want to put out my experience with Stadia. So I've pretty much had Stadia since around day one. You know, Stadia has been serving me really well. For my current entertainment slash gaming situation right now, where I'm at in life, Stadia is more convenient and it makes more sense just as a whole logically because I don't have a console right now. You know, a lot of people ask me, oh, you got a PS4 or 5, Xbox? No, I do not. I will never own an Xbox just for reasons alone, but I don't have any console. I have laptops. I've been consistently having, repairing, or buying new laptops for a few years now because I've been doing a lot of content work. Y'all see me creating, YouTubing, all this other content and just other things I'm into. You know, Stadia made a lot of sense. I could play games through the cloud, not only just from the cloud, but through the Google Chrome browser. Then they have their uh, their app that you can download on your laptop or even on your phone or TV and you can play through there and everything crosses over. So that it made a lot more sense for me personally to go ahead and get Stadia. And with Stadia, you can you don't have to. It's not mandatory for you to have their subscription service and you pay for Stadia Pro. No, you can download Stadia, get on Stadia, buy the game, own the game and play it just as if you were on Steam or Epic. I pay for Google Stadia Pro. I pay for Stadia Pro, which is $10 a month, which allows me to get free games every month. And I get great, 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 hefty discounts on their store, on the games that are available. 
so at the point in time of making this video the crew 2 racing game is on stadia and the bundle is about 89.99 dollars. this bundle comes with the season pass and a couple more items in dlc right if it wasn't a sale going on and if i didn't have stadia pro or whatever the case i don't know how much the sale is or what's the discount for non-Stadia Pro members, but because I'm a Stadia Pro member, the sale is $18. Without the sale, that bundle is like $89.99. Like I said, it's $90. But the Pro discount is $20. If I was into that game, I just I could buy that game, the season pass, and a couple other articles, of, uh, a couple items of DLC for 20 bucks. And I, and I got it for well over half off. So you have deals like that on Stadia happening all the time. Uh, one of the deals that just passed, one of the sales that just ended was for Madden uh, 21. Madden was just like 12, it was just like $10. And before that, the, the sale previously when Madden was included in that one, it was like $15. And Madden is being sold for full price. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a, the, like the platform is very, very great. You'll find videos are saying, oh, they didn't have a search bar. Well, guess what? Now they got a search bar. So quit complaining. Um, you know, and, and uh, here's the thing that Stadia has over all other streaming platforms or cloud gaming platforms. You can stream directly from Stadia to your YouTube channel. So you don't even necessarily need to just waste a whole bunch of money into buying a gaming PC into buying a microphone a camera you can save up and build up for a quality uh, gaming setup with stadia because stadia allows you to stream directly from their platform to your channel and i've done this plenty of times y'all can watch my madden videos y'all can watch the blue fire live stream watch the assassin's creed origins live stream and those came from directly the stadia platform and you can stream up into 4K, 1080p. You run those replays back, they go up to 1080p. So, you know, Stadia get a lot of, it gets a lot of hate because it's not what a lot of fans and consumers want. But at the same time, it's just starting. It's not going to be perfect. And a lot of people hate it on Google because they shut down SG&E. Well, you got to think about it. The pandemic hit and here comes Google wanting to hop into the, hop into the ring of video games. Okay, well, you just can't think you could throw money at the wall and come out with a AAA game. No, but at the same time, if the pandemic is pushing games like Gotham Knights nice back and a whole, I forgot a lot of other games that was supposed to come out in 2021, push back to 2022, if it's being rumored that GTA 6 is, was, was to come out 2023, but now it's being pushed back to 2024, 2025, the pandemic has affected the video game industry as far as the creation process because now people are at home people are not at the studio to work on this so people have to send files send clips send equipment and stuff all over the place because everybody is not at the studio everybody cannot work efficiently because we are not they are not at the place where all the tools and resources are there for for them to use that they need so Google, you already going to be in the red when you start this business up, when you start. You're not ever going to start a business and just boom off the gate. It's not going to work. It don't work like that. So now you potentially could lose double to quadruple your money if you continue having SG&E Studios. You got to think of the business side of things, you know, and that's what I feel like. Not even feel. That's what I think a lot of people is forgetting. OK, cool. We the consumers. We want to be pleased. We want to be entertained. But at the same time, you can't be entertained if somebody can't afford it. So, you know, or if it's just a bad investment. So, you know, but that doesn't mean that they won't hop back in the ring in the future because they, they, they just might. So, you know, it's a lot of second, you know, it's a lot of third, second party things going on with Stadia right now. And you never know. So with that being said, you know, my personal experience with Stadia has been great. Um, something we're going to touch on in this, the Internet connection uh, played on Wi-Fi is pretty much great until you have so many devices on it. And then if you hook your laptop or your PC, whatever, to the to your Internet box or if you get like Internet things and you can put them in your house 
and you connect directly to your internet box with the ethernet cord or whatever, flawless. It is flawless. I repeat, flawless, flawless victory. victory. Stadia wins. I'm telling you, bro. It's it, that's just it's just so flawless. I play Stadia with this Ethernet cord, no latency, no lag, everything is flawless, super fast. I'm, I'm I can stream in, you know, whatever quality, you know, my connection and my laptop or whatever it allowed me to get, which would probably be anywhere from 720 to 1080p, possibly even 4K. So overall, I've been having a positive experience with Stadia for these almost two years now. And I recommend Stadia and I tell people about Stadia all the time. You know, it's cheap. You get, you pay $10 to get free games and discounts on games. And whatever games you buy, you own. And even if you don't continue to pay the membership, you might not be able to play those games, but you don't lose your progress. So as soon as you pay for your membership again, you get all those games right back. All the free games you claim, they are yours. So let's go ahead and get into this uh, Xbox Game Pass because I really want to talk to y'all about this Xbox shit. So let's go ahead and get to it. Excuse the language, I'm gonna try and clean it up. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it because I know I wasted a lot of time talking about Stadia and whatever the case may be. So, Game Pass. Xbox Game Pass is like Netflix, all you video game subscription service from Microsoft. The service is available on Xbox One consoles, Xbox Series X, and S consoles, PC and Android devices as of writing, with plans to expand to web in the near future, from this article I'm reading. So Xbox Game Pass comes in three flavors. Game Pass gives you access to a large library of games on your Xbox console. Game Pass for PC gives you access to a large library of games on your Windows 10 PC. And Game Pass Ultimate gives you access to all games on Xbox consoles, PC, and a selection of games to stream from the cloud to Android devices. Game Pass Ultimate also includes Xbox Live Gold, which is needed for multiplayer gaming on Xbox consoles. So let's stop right there. This is part of the reason why I personally would never own an Xbox, because you have to have Xbox Live Gold, Silver, Platinum, whatever the fuck, just to play games online. When from PlayStation 1 all the way to about PlayStation 4, you never needed, there was no subscription service or no planned service. If you had got PlayStation Plus on PS3, you just got more perks because you could already play games online for free with PlayStation on Sony. So right up on the screen right now is the, the features and the perks and the price points of all the Xbox Game Pass things, right? So you got the regular one in the PC, you know, they, they, they're both like $9, $10 a month, you know, and you get access to stuff like that. Then you have Ultimate, which gives you gold, which is pretty much their selling point for five extra dollars, which is $15 a month, you know, which is cool or whatever. But um, let's go ahead and go down to, uh, cause I'm gonna make this quick. So Game Pass, you know, if anything, I'll say they have more games than Stadia, but Xbox ain't got no games. So they they got they have more quantity, but they have terrible quality again. So let's go ahead into what's wrong or what's not so great. Not what's wrong, what's not so great with Game Pass. Xbox Game Pass has a range of idiosyncrasies that hinder the platform in some ways. They range from mild irritations to bigger problems, but the website pre prefaced by saying none of it feels like a deal breaker. So let's go ahead and keep going down. The first pain point they often see across social media from those with kids is the lack of family access. If you're using the single share Xbox, every profile on that home Xbox gains access to Xbox Game Pass. However, if you have multiple Xbox consoles and have a bigger family, you'll need multiple Xbox Game Pass subscriptions to keep everybody online overlooked at the time of the service's creation. And, and see, that's dumb. So that means you about to be paying what? If everybody in your, if you want everybody in your crib to have Game Pass, you gonna be paying anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars again for Game Pass, which means you are gonna be overpaying for Xbox Live Gold at this point. And this is my thing. We talking about cost effective, and this is why I never liked the Xbox. It's not cost effective. You gotta buy all these accessories. You gotta buy batteries for the controller. I'm like, come on, man. Come on, man. 
Another source of irritation comes from Project X Cloud or Game Pass for Cloud across Android. Microsoft is among the first and most prolific companies to offer a cloud gaming option in their service at this scale. Sony has PlayStation Now, but doesn't consistently offer its own games to the service. Amazon Luna is just starting up, and Google Stadia is arguably winding down, which I do not agree with whatsoever. If you look it up, Google Stadia is actually going up in player base and active subscribers and people getting on the Stadia service. So I need everybody to like really stop feeding into this narrative that Google Stadia is dead, Google Stadia is this. No. It's just hard to, to change from something that you've been used to for a very long time. It's That's totally fine. So, you know, this website, they have a, they, they list a lot of things, you know, they go over a lot of stuff. I don't want to make this episode too long, but, um, you know, they pretty much say it is worth it. You know, they say Game Pass is worth it. Now, me personally, what I will say is you know whatever floats your boat right because it comes down to the individual me personally i'm sticking with stadia i'm riding out with stadia stadia they have good games their pre-order list is looking great they about to have the new far cry they got the new rainbow six they about to have, they got the new madden on there to be able to pre-order they got a lot of good games coming they keep getting new games ported and it's just great you know it's really 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 great i have a fun time on there I could play with the controller, I could play on my laptop, you could play on TVs, you could play on phones. You don't have to buy the subscription over and over and over to play on all these platforms. You can just sign in on your account, boom, there you go. Link your Google account, there you go. You can stream directly from the platform to YouTube. So you can, you know, start and be a, a, a small streamer, build your fan base up, build everything up. Game Pass is cool, but I've did my own research on Game Pass and game pass more or less you know you you know the cloud gaming model is the same no matter what platform xbox stadia playstation it's all the same pay for the subscription service you get the perks in the games if you don't you don't get the perks in the games simple as that what makes it worse for xbox to me personally is that you have to pay for every single device 20 times over 10 times over just so you can have Game Pass on this on this console, on that Xbox S, on the X, on the PC, on this. That's dumb. Then, I can't really speak on PlayStation now. I heard it was trash, but yeah. And um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? With Stadia, it's just, it's innovation, man. It's innovation at its finest. Mind you, we talking about cloud gaming. So we, we talking about your internet, we talking about your ISP, we talking about your connectivity, we talking about bandwidth, we talking about a lot of things. And Xbox, they already making you pay to play online. Who knows if they all, if they can, you know, develop an infrastructure to where their connectivity is solid. You know, like Stadia, like I said, Stadia isn't by any means perfect, but it's the most solid and indie developers, Indie video game creators and companies should definitely go to Stadia. Companies, big companies should definitely go to Stadia. Ubisoft is in on Stadia. You know, Writers Republic is going to end up on Stadia. Stadia has a lot of promise. And give it a few years, Stadia is going to be running cloud gaming. Everything is going to become streaming anyway. So Google Stadia is going to be number one. Yeah, Xbox has popularity, but y'all also cost a lot. Y'all cost money, bruh. Y'all cost money. But with that being said, man, this is going to be it for the gamers then. I hope y'all like this episode. Um, I, I tried to keep it short. You know what I'm saying? If you like this, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to catch y'all next time, man. Peace. Gone.